The Truth the Girls. Hi everyone. I've been researching mental illness a lot lately and I wanted to share with you some of the things I found. And I thought a good place to start would be with the connection between schizophrenia and bipolar disorder and infectious disease and um, and infections in general. And I just want to do a little disclaimer that I am not a doctor, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a neurologist, so I don't really know a lot about you know this field in general, but I've been doing some research and I just like to share this information with you and um, if you have anything to contribute let me know in the comments. So schizophrenia is considered a psychiatric disorder and it's usually treated with psychiatric medication and the accepted view is that there's something wrong with the brain chemistry something to do with dopamine and uh, then the medications could maybe help regulate the neurotransmitters and this will um, improve the symptoms uh, but my question is what is causing this disruption and in, in the neurotransmitter activity in the brain um, and, and I'm wondering, or I was wondering, whether there could be a connection to some kind of infectious trigger because I've seen research on this in the past. This has actually been known for a long time that there's a con there can be connections between infectious conditions and mental illness. For example, in the early uh, 20th century, uh, there was a psychiatric label paresis where people ended up in the hospital in straitjackets for this condition and it was later discovered that this was caused by um, the late symptoms of advanced syphilis and there and there are others my, my own son has a, such a disorder it's called pandas it's a pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorder associated with strep I know it's like a whole mouthful but that, that's what it is and um, what it is is an autoimmune reaction to strep where the the body attacks the brain instead of the strep and it causes psychiatric symptoms so um, this is what sparked my interest in this or got me on that road and as I said, they, it's been known that there's connections between uh, infectious disease and mental illness for a long time. And uh, so I've been looking into schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. And I found a few very interesting things. And one of them is toxoplasmosis. Toxoplasmosis parasite may trigger schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. So the toxoplasmosis parasite is found in cat feces. and in a person with a healthy immune system, it probably wouldn't cause any real symptoms if they had the infection, or maybe it would and they'd just be kind of subclinical and the person would suffer from depression. But in a person with a compromised immune system, someone who's very vulnerable, it can cause very severe symptoms such as schizophrenia and uh, bipolar disorder because it actually affects the brain chemistry. It says here the parasite infects the brain by forming a cyst within its cells and produces an enzyme called tyrosine hydroxylase which is needed to make dopamine. Dopamine's role in mood, sociability, attention, motivation and sleep patterns are well documented and schizophrenia has long been associated with dopamine which is the target of all schizophrenia drugs on the market. So it's very interesting to know that something like a toxoplasmosis parasite can affect dopamine levels and cause schizophrenia symptoms and also bipolar. And they also said that since they know that the parasite um, can affect dopamine levels, they'd like to study whether it's possibly also connected to Parkinson's disease, Tourette's syndrome, or ADHD. So here's another article on toxoplasmosis in your brain, and they mention here that it can cause milder symptoms. It doesn't have to be schizophrenia. They do mention schizophrenia, but they also said depression and anxiety. And the other article mentioned bipolar disorder, and I have a friend who's bipolar, and in her teen years she was very depressed, she actually had suicide attempt, and she was hospitalized. And she says that she was told at the time that having a major depressive episode as a teenager with um, a suicidal attempts raises the risk for bipolar disorder. So is it that having experienced the depression and that does that change your brain chemistry and put you at risk or is it that there's some underlying condition that affects your brain chemistry and the early symptoms would be depression and feeling suicidal and then later on it it um, matures to a full-on psychiatric disorder like bipolar disorder now, I, I'm very interested to know how the immune system, um, what, what role the immune system plays in mental illness. I have a friend who uh, went schizophrenic. 
shortly after using interferon treatment for hepatitis C. And the change was so dramatic, I, I had to wonder whether the interferon could have played a role. And I'm not saying that interferon causes schizophrenia, but interferon is considered an immunosuppressive treatment that reduces uh, Th1 cytokines and immune cells. And they do mention here that um, among the common side effects, there are psychiatric symptoms, including suicidal ideation. Now, uh, I, of course, had to wonder, uh, because the immune system is involved, could altering the immune system with a drug like interferon, an immunosuppressive drug, could that then raise the risk for full-blown psychiatric symptoms like schizophrenia? And I found this very interesting study here, Interferon Responses in Schizophrenia and Major Depressive Disorders. So you see here, the spontaneous and induced interferon production in whole blood cultures was examined in 45 psychiatric inpatients and in 65 normal controls. Your body produces interferon naturally, uh, but, you know, there's also artificial interferon drug. So what they noticed was... In patients with high interferon response, uh, they had dominant positive symptoms of schizophrenia, such as delusions, hallucinations, bizarre behavior, and thought disorder, whereas in patients with low interferon response, the negative symptoms prevailed, like a sociability, asociality, sorry, or withdrawal, flat affect, attention impairment, abolition, or apathy. Because some schizophrenic symptoms is like the person is antisocial, doesn't talk, their face is just like that and and some of them are the ones people mostly know about like the hearing voices and delusions and things like that so what they're showing here was that depending on the response to interferon high response you had a lot of positive symptoms a low response you had negative symptoms like if you're on the high or the low end you, you would have more symptoms. So this again makes me wonder how much of a role does just your basic immune system play in the development of psychiatric symptoms? Now here's another thing that's really interesting. Um, so you, you're looking at the immune system of people have schizophrenia and you see that depending on like maybe they have like over response or under response to things like interferon and in, maybe in their own immune system. Um, and, and then they have symptoms there seems to be a connection, well, to me, anyhow. Uh, and, and then you've got to wonder, well, how would this person respond to an infectious illness if their immune system is, is not balanced and they don't have a normal, you know, middle-range immune system response? It's like extremes. Well, what happens when they get an infection? Urinary tract infections 29 times more likely in schizophrenia relapse. So this study, they looked at relapsed hospitalized schizophrenic patients and stable outpatients and uh, normal controls. And what they found was there's a high incidence of urinary tract infections in relapsed schizophrenic patients. Now, of course, the logical thing to think would be, well, if the person's having a schizophrenic relapse, they're probably not taking very good care of their hygiene, and maybe that's why they have more UTIs, of course. But... Dr. Miller, who is corresponding author of the study in the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry, said um, he pursued the study because he's seen improvements in patients' psychiatric conditions simply by treating them with antibiotics for a UTI. And so that's why he said that UTIs could actually be the trigger. And wow, this doesn't only happen with schizophrenia. It says it happens with uh, dementia, where a significant percent of patients with worsening aggressive behaviors and psychotic symptoms have a UTI that, when treated, improves dementia-related problems. Now, here's something else that's really amazing. Psychotropic effects of antimicrobials and immune modulation by psychotropics implications for neuroimmune disorders. This is just mind-blowing. What they're saying here is that antimicrobials, like antibiotics, and, and, and psychotropic medications have overlapping mechanisms of action and that antimicrobials can have a neuroprotective effect. It's like the antibiotics have some effects like psych drugs and the psych drugs have some effects like antibiotics. It says the immune system appears to be an important site of interaction as several antimicrobials display neurological and at times direct psychotropic effects 
while well, psychotropics have shown significant immunomodulatory properties. That, that is that the, the psych meds alter, modulate the immune system. And they talked here about the beta-lactam class of antibiotics, which include things like penicillin and amoxicillin and a whole bunch of other ones. And they said, while primarily, primarily utilized for the antimicrobial activity, beta-lactam antibiotics were found to promote the expression of the glutamate transporter GLT-1 and have a neuroprotective role in vivo and in vitro when used in models of ischemic injury, that's like damage from a stroke, and motor neuron degeneration, suggesting significant neuroprotective properties. And then they mention here pandas and um, azithromycin and penicillin being used and showing improvements in neuropsychiatric symptoms after two to six weeks of antibiotic treatment. I find this is really interesting, the neuroprotective properties. I mean, I'm not a big fan of, you know, dosing people up with any kind of pharmaceuticals. But, you know, if there's a serious condition and the pharmaceuticals are helping, well, you know, why not, right? Like my son who has pandas, and at one point he had a lot of deterioration in motor skills and also in the way he was talking. And honestly, I, I said to my husband, it's like he's lost a few IQ points. I mean, it seemed like he'd been hit on the head with a frying pan or something. Like, he'd really changed. And he went on the antibiotics, he started to improve. And then when he was off them and it flared up again, some of the panda symptoms came back, but he seemed to have recovered neurologically. I mean, he didn't seem brain damaged anymore. So, finally, what would be really interesting to see would be, has there been any kind of study where they gave schizophrenics um, antibiotics to see if it would have any effect on their psychiatric condition? And guess what? There is! Scientists shocked to find antibiotics alleviate symptoms of schizophrenia. Wow! It says that um, scientists believe that schizophrenia and other mental illnesses, including depression, and Alzheimer's disease may result from inflammatory processes in the brain. Minocycline has anti-inflammatory and neuroprotective effects, which they believe could account for the positive findings. Because of chance observations in Japan that the acne drug minocycline um, caused dramatic improvement in schizophrenic patients' symptoms, uh, there, there were some studies done around the world, and it says here trials in Israel, Pakistan, and Brazil have shown significant improvement in patients tested with the drug, and now the uh, National Institute for Health Research is in, in England is funding a trial of minocycline to see how it, um, how it, whether it helps with schizophrenic patient symptoms. So just like back in the early 1900s when they first realized that uh, syphilis was giving people psychiatric symptoms and landing them in the mental hospitals. I think we're at a really important point in time right now when it comes to mental illness because psychiatry, the DSM, I mean that's a statistical diagnostic and statistical manual for mental disorders and they, you know psychiatrists are aware that there can be biological, oh well, they're biological, that they can be like infectious or dietary or you know, toxicity exposure causes or whatever to mental illnesses. But it's like kind of limited and they mostly treat with psych drugs. But I think we're like at this really amazing point in history where immunology and psychiatry is, is converging, you know, and they're starting to realize that a lot of psychiatric illnesses are caused by underlying problems that have to do with the immune system. And I think this is just really great because once they do more research and they really, you know, start to know how, how to find these underlying problems and how to treat them and this becomes common knowledge, it's going to help so many people. So I wanted to share this information with you. I hope you find it helpful. And please leave me your comments. And thanks for listening to me. And I'll see you next time.